What's going on, everybody? This is Randall Barnes, the founder of HBC Pulse and the host of Pulse Radio in the building for an amazing special edition of HBC Pulse Radio on today. We have HBCU royalty. We have reality TV history <laughs> in the building. We're covering College Hill Celebrity Edition. So we had to bring in the OG Season 2 College Hill Langston University. How y'all doing? We good. There we are. There we are. Hey, y'all, y'all here, like, man, listen, like what I've always heard is that scarcity brings up value. And I cannot find your season, so I did not get a chance to watch it. <laughs> Next year, I blame Southern for season one because I like to be prepared. I would have watched. I want to let y'all know that. I would have watched. I would have supported. I would have been asking about different stuff. I don't know nothing about the fire. I'm going to learn about the fire today. I'm, I'm, I'm going to learn about who's running the house today. I'm going to learn about all of it because I saw the trailer. So we're going to get into it. All right. But I want to go on and do just the, the introduction. I want you just to tell everyone who you are. Let's start with you, Israel. So what's going on? My name is Israel. I was the uh, football player on the on the, on the the season, uh, the jock. And uh that's me. Oh, what's up, everyone? I'm Peaches. I was known as Baby Mama on the show. And I'm just glad to, you know, get back to it, I guess, and discuss this new season. What's good, everybody? I'm I'm Nafis. Um, I guess you could say I'm the player or the, the, the ladies man. That's what it was, the ladies man. Um, and shoot, I'm from Newark, New Jersey. And shoot, what's happening? We we back. I right, to play. I see you play. All right. <laughs> I see you play. Hey, it's pretty. Um, I don't know what I was. I guess some wild child. Um, Israel was my ex, so that was like the first thing that came to mind. But yeah, that's what I was like the heart of my drama was being with Israel. So um, I don't. That was me, I guess. A, a wild, crazy, rambunctious night. <laughs> I love it. I, I love it. That that's interesting. So it's a lot of things. That, you know, I want to discuss about this season um we we just recently interviewed the college hill southern university edition of the show that cast so i want to ask you all about this because i've interviewed students that are at texas southern university and when i interview them a lot of folks let me know that they did not know about college hill before it aired because it aired so long ago and it just now came back but with you all you all had southern university that was the predecessor so I want to ask you all just individually how you all found out about College Hill. Uh, for for me, I was at football practice, and um, all of a sudden I started hearing people say there's a new show coming. It's uh, College Hill. It's about it's reality with people that are on the show, and you can go to the to the hall and you can uh, you can interview and whatnot. And uh, it just kind of kind of dumbed down from there. But you know, it was more or less one of those things where you got to go interview because it's a great opportunity. Um, but I had no idea what the hell it was. I, it was just, it was just a random show to me. So let's see. Um, I think I watched the show. I was very interested in the show. I don't know how I found it, but, um, I watch a lot of TV. So that's how I found out about the show. And it was just a coincidence that they came to Langston university. So somebody told me to go try out and that's what I did. What's good. Y'all. I was headed. Um, I heard about college Hill. What was it? Oh yeah, I was in the room and I just left out. And so happened I was on my way to basketball practice and like they was like, yo, man, y'all should go in there and just try it and do this and do that, and do that. It was a whole bunch of wild fiasco at the time because it was so many kids and so many students and stuff like that at the time. And man, just wild at that time. Just super wild. So I have a story about that. I went with my friend at the time, um, Marisha. She wanted to be on the show. Um, and I, I didn't really care. I didn't know much about it. I was just like, yeah, everybody with me. Um, so we went there and we applied and we were talking. And Israel, catch me if I'm wrong, but I think you and April walked up. Is, is that, was that correct? I believe so, yep. So um, there was a PR guy and my friend Marisha were being messy. And they said, well, they're exes. He dumped her to be with her. And from then, I think Tracy Evans was was she there? I think she was sitting right there. I, I can't, it's been a while, but um, ever since then, she was like, she pulled me aside and said, you got to be on the show. Absolutely, you got to do it. He's attractive, you're attractive, y'all come on together. I know there's something there. And I said, no, it's not. He chose me on the beauty. That's exactly what I said, I remember. Um, and so from that point, she just saw drama and chaos, and that's how I got on, by doing that. And I never really 
answer a certain question, I didn't do that. I answered one question on one sheet of paper, like one big answer, and that was it. Because I thought it was tedious. It was too much work. I didn't want to do it. Hey, so, so I, I've heard a lot about the application process to be on College Hill because we talked to uh, the Southern University cast and they said it was 60 pages and they even said that they had to draw a picture of themselves. Did y'all have that same, you know, call, call and y'all have to do that on your application? Do y'all remember what was on there? No, nah, it was a lot of questions, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so, I know we signed stuff away. <laughs> and so, they wanted to know your last sexual experience. I do remember that. that was mine on there. Your last sexual experience? They put that on there. They put that on there. Is this E Harmony? Well, what what's going on? Like, wait a right, minute. Hey, right. We're we're college students. Some of them were teenagers. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> what in the okay, okay that that's an interesting question i i think that that changed around a little bit I, I think that that wouldn't be asked at this current point because i think that that would raise a lot of questions all right so right. i didn't get the opportunity and like i said to watch the season because i was just too young i was born in 1996 i graduated for, i graduated from football state university in fall of 2019 so i am yes i'm very young. I did not know about College Hill until around 2007 as I was channel seven because I was tired of probably watching Teen Titans. I was like, oh, what's this on BET? You know what I'm saying? So I, I saw, I saw, and I saw uh, like no version. I was, I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And then in 2017, as I was really growing HBCU Pulse and trying to grow my knowledge base, I dove right into College Hill and just what the franchise meant and all those different things. So I want you all just to give me like a couple of experiences that you all remember from the show. Any anybody remember that one lady though that was like the instigator lady? She was always talking to me and shit, and she'd be like, "Remember, because that's how like your fight started and everything." Because I kind of like instigated and when it started with you when you got off work, peaches. Connie, like, when you got off work, all I know is I was getting briefed on the way from work, like about what's going on in the house. So I was already yeah, on ten. Just, yeah, yeah, they wasn't telling me yeah. that. They Boiling this pot and shit. <laughs> that was well, I remember bad. we all slept in one bed. I do remember that. Um, I think it was me, Israel, Brittany, and uh, who else was with us? I don't know what the other cast members with us. Well, I remember we I all think slept Protein, in one I think bed. Protein is. Yeah. Um, you know, the only thing that I really remember about the show is going to a club and nobody was there <laughs> in Stillwater. <laughs> Um, and I remember also, yeah, we argued about a party or something, inviting who we could invite. You remember that? We were mm -hmm. arguing about Timber, what type of Timberwood, party. Timberwoods, Timberwoods. Timberwood. Yeah. Timberwood. And Timberwood. you remember Timberwood. 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 she wouldn't go because she was a Christian. And they was like, if no, all of you guys don't go, you can't go. We were all mad at her. <laughs> oh, because yeah. I don't do that. Right, we were really angry. But, you know, like I said, the, the most thing that I'm known for or remembered for and uh, Brittany and Izzy know what they're remembered for. <laughs> but what I was remembered for was, you know, the, the fight with John. So, you know, John antagonizing me. And I muffed him in his face and told him to keep my name out of his mouth. That caused okay. me to get taking kicked off the show <laughs> so, so i i, I want to clear up this little bit of history about college hill and about black reality tv so right. what i have told a lot of of my underclass from that fort valley that did not watch college hill they did not know what it was and i'm like this is blasphemous you don't know college hill but i'm like you know what i understand it because you know i didn't even watch college hill so i can understand if you were born after me that you didn't even watch it but I used to tell them that, listen, College Hill, like, like College Hill Virgin Islands had history because it had the first reality TV show fight. But now I'm here and I'm, I, I got new information that you're telling me that you had a fight on, on the show. So I want you to tell me about, about that. Am I inaccurate in that assessment? Was VI the first fight in College Hill or was it in Langston or was that Langston, the Langston edition? Well, I'll say it was Langston. But we had a scuffle. We didn't really fight. We just had a little scuffle. They <laughs> fought. Like, they really got physical. Mom was just a muff in the face. It wasn't nothing. I mean, he wasn't going to fight back. It was nothing. It was just, after that, that's all it was. It wasn't nothing big. Theirs was really serious. Like, those girls were really angry. I do recall, I think a heel was involved and blood and all this other stuff. No, we didn't go to that extreme. 
those extremes, you know what I'm saying? So, but I will say we were the first people to really have an altercation or a physical altercation um, on College Hill. So we have, we have to revise reality TV show history because it's starting in season two. All right, so I want right. I want to let you know I want to give you I want to give you the credit because history is history regardless because you got you got all these other shows and and they get the tussling but it happened on it happened in season two maybe season four was the derivative of it you know what I'm saying you got you got you got the right. father you got the son all right so maybe it's just the derivative version of it so we I had got, wholesome moments too we had wholesome moments okay so I want you to talk about the, the wholesome moments talk about the wholesome moments and just the moments where you all were bonding we fished we went fishing. You guys remember we all went fishing before. I that was my was first. Happening. Being from the hood, I never got to really fish like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's what it is. We went fishing. But, I mean, we went um, to the mall right when this. We, we were still. We was. We went to the mall together, didn't we? We hit the mall. Yeah, we the hit mall. the mall. There were people were found in the bathroom doing things. Yeah, we um. had the first. <laughs> we had a sexual. No, we had a two. Like somebody uh, had a sexual encounter with right. somebody. I was two, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that was one of the I mean, we are the first, like, you know, to get Cheating on their others, you know. I remember that. Okay. Are we all learning something new? Y'all forgot or something? So, me and I had this entanglement before there was an mm. entanglement. Mm. How was that entanglement? Like, tell me about the entanglement. Were you the original entanglement Ooh. before Will Smith and Jada? Did anybody get slapped? Okay, what happened? <laughs> Uh, no, it, it, uh, there was they, an they, altercation. They, no, they, they kissed, right? Yeah. There they was kinda... an altercation at a hotel with his ex, but it... what? Oh man, it's not oh, trying to... yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember that part. I really don't. But um, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> it's the hotel. It's almost, the hotel. it's almost twenty years, so hey, it is what it is. Yeah, the hotel. Been yeah, it, it, man, man, listen, it, it, it's certain right, things. Sometimes right, I, don't right, know, right. I don't remember what I did yesterday sometimes. 20 years might be a little bit fuzzy. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so, I mean, the reality, the reality is, is Brittany and I, you know, we had, we were in a relationship. We were together for a long time. It was our freshman year. I mean, we did the whole thing. And then, you know, honest, honestly, I don't really don't remember why we really broke up. I think it was just kind of like we just were young and just kind of want to have fun or something. I really don't remember, to be honest. Like, but I do know she was a, a, a bright girl she's beautiful she's smart you know and I, I, and there was nothing bad about Brittany whatsoever i mean just to clear the record right she's awesome in every capacity but i just think we were young and then we were on the show and then i was dating somebody else at the time and then you know we were very very attracted to each other in every capacity and it was kind of hard to be around a person you're so attracted to every single day all day every day for weeks at a time and then you know me and my other girl me and my girlfriend at the time we were on our way out we were kind of breaking up already so it was kind of like hey it is what it is i, I honestly was like whatever so but uh but no i mean it was a, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was looking at it as a negative thing it was kind of like just a situation so. yeah i feel like this so so so, so Brady, what what's your i want to get your your view on this so like what what's your view on it because you all were on the same show and I know that 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 can be hard. Like it's almost like you know, like you're seeing somebody that you're that you're rocking with, and then now you're working with them. You have to see them every day. So what was it like for you? So my heart was broken when I me and Israel broke up. I, my friends remember kind of helping me out. I, I was sad. I'll, I'll admit it. it. It hurt me. Um, but when the show happened, I was over it. So when it was time to have our little entanglement, I did it out of pure spite because his girlfriend Ooh. said something to me that I didn't like. She said, I trust him. I just don't trust you. And I said, okay, watch this. <laughs> and the entanglement happened, and it is what it, it was what it was. So I really did it out of spite. I wouldn't do that now. That, that was so, so bad of me to do that. But uh, I had to prove a point, and I did. So This seems like less of an entanglement, more of chess moves. Like, God, I lead three steps ahead. These chess moves, I know you're gonna feel me, sis. What the world? Chess move, checkmate. Like okay. God, I, I was I was also 19 and kind of petty. So it was just I, my attitude was so I was so rebellious. So it was just kind of like whatever. Like do or die, whatever. And that was my like my, my outlook. But I, I was really sweet though on Israel. You remember me? No, yeah, for sure. I mean, even even after we everything every even after everything happened, they didn't know what happened. But they knew we was in the bathroom for X amount of time together. They went back and looked at the tapes. So even after all that happened, me and Brittany had got together on the yard while we was in class. And she was like, look, Israel, this is what we're going to say. We're just going to say we was in the bathroom for just a minute. We were just talking. And that's all that happened. And I was like, OK. But then because there were some 
people, producers in the background talking to me, talking to her. I was like, oh, you know what? They're going to make me out to be a liar. Like, I lied about this whole situation. And they're going to make Britney tell the truth. And I was like, man, fuck it. I don't really care. I'm just going to tell the truth. It don't matter. So it was, it, it, they they played the part good. They did it well. But to be real, Britney was kind of like trying to protect me by just saying, you know, just don't say that. We just in there talking. That's all we was doing. Hey, hey, hey Macy got to get on one accord. Got to get on code. We call getting on code. But I have to ask this, though, in general, when it comes to just that era of college hill and i say college college hill and also reality tv because reality tv is different now and i did an interview with, with ray with ray you know for season three and he said that because he was on love and hip-hop and he was on college show season three so now things have changed where reality tv to a point is more scripted but i always saw college hill as a docu-series so like were they point were they pinpointing different storylines for you all? It was the relationship storyline something that was pinpointed? So they were being kind of messy behind the scenes, like they had said. Um, but a lot of that was it was just who we were. It was our our our, our character. Like Peaches was who she was. Now Feast was laid back, cool, not Feast. Israel was more of a, a ladies' man, kind of like there with not Feast, but he had his girlfriend at the time. Um, I was wild and crazy, like I always have been. Um, who we were, you mix all that together and you have uh, Tanisha and um, uh, Stacy Stacy from California. Co-T. Like you mix, Cote, you mix all these different personalities and these characters together and you're going to get fired. You, you just are. And, and, they, and wow, man, John. Of course, John, that was, you didn't have John, to prove anything for him. John ran around the house naked. On the show. Right. right there. I, I think he was just trying to be a star. Like he really was trying to get ratings. I got I go okay. So let's talk about that because I watched the trailer. So the only thing I was able to watch in preparation for this interview was the trailer. And I'm not even gonna lie, I watched it twice. I was like, whoa. Well, I wasn't ready for that. I was like, oh my gosh. So and then I saw him walk around running around naked. I saw the, the we conversations all the things. So, <laughs> tell, tell, him about, tell him about the running around nigga. You got y'all gotta give me an oral history of that. Like how, how did that come about? He just did it. I don't know. He would get drunk and his girlfriend oh, would be there. We was, he, I actually think he was just trying to make I forgot about his girlfriend. Yeah, he was drunk. Yeah, he, I think, I, yeah he was really, I think he just yeah. was trying to, to be a star. You know what I'm saying? Now he might be one. You know, if if they showed our season now, he might probably be the big star. I don't know. Um, I just feel like it was a lot of missed opportunities with our season and with so the seasons he, after. When you say missed opportunities, you said even the season after. So what do you mean by missed opportunities? I think they didn't really show the real life of a college student. I think they focus on more, you know, um, other things that wasn't important. I think if they would have focused on the the education, the opportunities, well, you know, what a college student deals with, you know, uh, financial aid, not having money to go to school, not having the scholarships, you know, Dealing with the professors, enrollment, housing issues, you know, the things, yeah, the things that you now HBCUs are, that's coming to the forefront. You know what happened at Howard University, Um, it's happened at Alabama State, you know, all these different schools that have this issue with the housing, the financial aid, you know, the classes, different things like that. I think they could have took the opportunity to really show the issues that, and that probably could have been fixed a little earlier, probably could have got the financial, you know, assistance now, because we know during 2020, you had all type of people were donating to the black, historical black colleges. You know, there are a lot of colleges that were about to close. I'm down here with Morris Brown. You know, Morris Brown had lost their accreditation. So I think they didn't have, at the time when we were taping, Langston didn't have their accreditation. And I Mm, found that out later. So it it is is they had the opportunity to really show the college life or the life of a student attending a historical black colleges and the issues and the things that they come into. You could have added the drama, but I think they focus more on our our outside lives instead of focusing more on our you know our our student lives. I would say. So I think that brings about a very interesting question that. I think is is perfect. Like I, I I love that you brought this to part. So what did you all believe that your season of College Hill would be? And the reason why I ask that is because right now with Celebrity Edition, a lot of students have a perception of what they believe this generation of College Hill should be. Of course, the classwork is amazing. We get to see, you know, the celebrities in class. Right. 
but I know a lot of people, and myself included, I want to see the celebrities interacting on Texas Southern's campus. And then we look right. at, at at Southern's version. You know, we saw you know a, a white SGA president. We saw a probate. Right. We saw different things of the campus experience. So, what did you all believe that the experience of College Hill Langston would be? No, I, I think it. I think it was what it was. And I thought it, I, I think it was going to be what it was, um, and only because when you're actually filming, like you know what's going on in the house and you know what's being covered. I mean, even from a perspective of them coming, when they did come to campus with us, you know, it was very minute. It would be, hey, we're going to follow Israel to his first class. And, you know, for the first maybe I'd say week or two weeks of us actually being in the house, um, they they would come to the school. And then after that, they'd be back at the mansion waiting for us to come home or coming to pick us up. And they'd be in the van. They wouldn't have the cameras rolling. And literally there was no cameras even running until we got home. And we got home. Look, I'll tell you this. I I, did, I don't remember studying one time. I don't even remember really doing too much homework. I came home and it was all about trying to find food because they didn't they were the one feeding us good either. So <laughs> trying to find food, um, you know, figure out what time we were going to eat and then just, you know, conversating with Feast and everybody else in the house. And, you know, honestly, we were looking for stuff to do, looking for stuff to get into. So from an overall scope of things, like I remember like the second week doing it, I told my dad, I said, Dad, I said, I don't really think this show is going to be about college. It's going to be more about us being in the house, hanging out. Yeah, it wasn't anything that I expected. I think um, from my point of view, I was a single mom in college. So I was trying to balance being a single, which you have a lot of that now. Single parents or adult parents trying to balance college um, work and family. And so that is somebody's story. And um, I felt like that, like, again, they missed the opportunity to really show, you know, how a single mom, you know, especially you call me baby mama, you know, that'd be offensive now if you call somebody that. But, you know, just using me as a baby mama and having a child and showing how you go to school, you balance, you know, being a single mom and and trying to study and, and trying to just balance all the, you know, college life as a single parent. So, again, I didn't, you know, I was very surprised that it ended up being the way it was. But again, you know what I'm saying? I felt like we were competing with real world. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know if real world was still going, but I felt like it was an African-American version of real world. Um, I didn't really too much know what to expect. I was an athlete just coming to, um, basically, like, I felt like I was just going to be able to, like, add on to, like, maybe, like, help the team and stuff like that, help the school get, you know, recognition and things like that. Um, and then also to, like, you know, uh, shit, show that I'd be in the classroom doing my thing, too. And, like, and also, like, I didn't really think about, like, you know, the whole hanging thing because I ain't too much of, like, the club goer like that, you know what I'm saying? But um, I just looked at it as a, a opportunity because um, I was from Newark, New Jersey and shit, and I was coming to Oklahoma. And then this just happened to me, like, wow. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I got I got an opportunity to be on TV and stuff like that. Um, and I just took it and like I became one with all my peoples in the house and all that stuff like that. And shoot, it was just a, a, a great opportunity. That's all I looked at it as at first. Like, you know what I mean? As everything, like I'm one of them people, like, you know, the the doors and stuff start opening as I'm in within stuff. And like, you know what I mean? I get to, you know, know everybody and see things and how things is and weigh it all out like that. It was exactly what I expected. I didn't expect anything. Um, it's a reality show about African-American kids and African-American college doing our thing. I knew it wasn't going to be about education. I knew it wasn't going to be about showcasing um, our talents or anything that we had to show off. It was going to be all about trauma. And that's exactly what it was. And I figured that. I, I, I had a feeling that was what they wanted because, for one, reality TV was so new back then. I don't even think they knew everything that they were doing. I really don't think that they really thought out and understood how this actually works because it was so new. So I think all the expectations was like, let's just film and see what kind of happens because this has really never been done before. So, but we all know people like to see fights and arguments and disagreements and drama and things like that. So if we can get that in there, 
I think they thought, you know, we'll be good to go, which I loved it. I actually did. I loved everything about it. Yes, you can give or, make, give or take certain things here and there, but I loved watching myself. I loved watching these other people from other areas, um, how we all interacted with each other, how we thought differently. But we all kind of came out with the same understanding on most things. Um, and I loved who I was. I just, I, hey, it, it, nobody gets to see themselves the way we got to see ourselves. So that can either make or break you if you allow it. So back to your question, I didn't really have any expectations. I was just rolling with it. What I'm hearing is essentially that you guys didn't expect for uh, College Hill Langston to be, you know, what it was about, like, you know, eight, eight co-eds and drama. So I want to ask this, and I think this is the logical follow-up question. Were you all okay with what it was? Because it is a part of history, and it did get, get viewership. It did get, get revenue ratings, you know what I'm saying? So are, were you cool with what it became? I wasn't cool with what happened afterwards. And I guess it's because reality TV being so new, there wasn't a, 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 a Facebook and Instagram fashion Nova to try to explore. Mm -hmm. because I feel like that would have been right up your alley. Um, <laughs> all the, all, no, seriously, all the Amber yeah. Rose and the, the, what's her name, Drea, and all the people that even Black China, you see all these girls now. Pioneer, she's a pioneer. Right, so you see all these girls, now she is. So you see all these young women, and some men take advantage of their platform of they were able to make money and put out things to kind of help That's the missed their opportunity. Exactly. So it goes back yes. to the show for what it was. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. You know, I'm I'm happy to do it. I'm glad it's coming back up because I'm a realtor now in Austin, Texas. So it gives me an opportunity to <laughs> showcase who I am now and what I have going on. But back then, I wish we had more of a um, a pathway to I call it the Kardashian path yeah. um, to success because we we should have had PR people if we wanted to do something. And a lot of that I know goes back to our hustle because uh, uh, T, T Ray did it um, some years later, but I feel like it just wasn't a lot of um, success afterwards to kind of push us forward into whatever we really wanted to do. Um, and so some what, people tried, but got lost. I don't know. And with that being said, that would honestly be like the best spin off college here possible. Or if you did like a college hill where are they now type scenario where it would be basically given the opportunity kind of how far could you make yourself go i mean because if i knew now what i knew then and i know people say that a lot of time when they get older but i think everything would have changed i would have did things differently i probably wouldn't even went out to be a model and act and all that kind of stuff in la i probably would have been behind the scenes and worked hard toward that etc and not to say it's too late to do now yada 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 but Again, to their perspective, your opportunity is much higher whenever you're the face now, you know, and Kyrie used to always tell all of us, even in the van when he would be picking us up, who was he was a, a singer on the boys, Kyrie. Um, he would always say, guys, don't worry about what you have going on right now. He said, be focused on what you're going to do next. He said, always be a step ahead. And that was the best advice he probably could have given any of us, um, because to be completely honest, even though we probably did try to do that. We didn't really take advantage of it the way we could have, honestly, because the advantage truly wasn't there. You know, we were constantly waiting for BET's publicist to get us into this or get us into that or whatever might have been, or whether it be the award show, waiting to see if we was even going to get get into the BET awards. And, you know, like, so there was a lot of that, right? So, um, but if they wanted to do a show right now, it would be kind of like, who could be the most successful? Like, let's figure out which one of these guys from these past seasons could be the most successful given the new opportunity age hmm. okay i've never seen it like that um i just you know i think as i got older and now how i see how politics work and how things work i did graduate my, with my degree in communications finally but just knowing how things work and how the african-american person is seen on television how we're seen and how they portray us if I could go back, I would probably had more self-control. And the reason why I say that is because I, 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 although we're trying to get ratings, um, society has painted a picture of us being violent, angry, especially black women being angry. So I was one of those women that was seen as angry and violent. You know what I'm saying? So if I could do it all over again, I would 
do things differently on the show and maybe try to push more positivity, I would say, because of the reputation that we have as African-American, you know, uh, people, you know, how, how the news paint us, you know what I'm saying? How things paint. I know Love and Hip Hop got a lot of backlash. You know, there's a lot of shows that got a lot of backlash. Langston actually got a lot of backlash from us doing that. It was a lot of backlash. A lot of the alumni did not appreciate, you know, them showing that. Although that's what happens. You know, students do get into it. We party. You can't say we didn't party. We're Langston, you know, said historical black college. So, you know, if I could do it all over again, like they said, we didn't really have, I think um, social media was just starting. You know, so then you can really paint your platform. So the seasons that came after us actually got the more advantage. I know it was some that went on went on trips. We didn't go on trips. We had to beg, and it was after season to go on something. They got on trips, so more money was available. You know, we were first the first two seasons. It wasn't a lot of money available. You know, so we weren't able to do the trips and do more things and really engage with a lot of different things. So the shows that came after us had more of an advantage. You see a lot of them went on to do other things, um, start clothing lines, you know, different things. Um, you know, um, I, I, somebody has a, I think a skincare line, you know, just different things. I was looking like, wow. But I will say, you know, the opportunity was amazing. I mean, you can't go and say that, you know, you can't talk to everybody. Everybody's never been on TV before. You know, my daughter was on TV and she's two, but now she's 20. You know what I'm saying? So that opportunity was amazing. But like I said, if I could do it all over again, I think I would have pushed more positivity because I see how the reality TV show has painted us and has put the reputation on us. So that's that's how I would see everything. So I think the logical next question to me is what do you think of just like how BET at that time, because that was even before Viacom, you know, bought BET and they weren't in control of this season. Do you mm -hmm. think you all were, were used? Like do, like, like, do you think that you all were using this equation? Or do you think that you worked and Langston worked in partnership with BET at that time? <laughs> Looking at it from a high level, right? Um, at this age of my life, I feel like, okay, well, then we were like one of the first reality shows, period. Right. Um, we were definitely by far before social media platform time. I mean, you had MySpace was I, I was I, I didn't get on MySpace truly until like after College Hill. Right. Like after the show was already out and everything. Right. So that was like the big thing then. So. I think we I think my dad taught me a long time ago, he said, you know, it's some sometimes you can use people a good way and sometimes you can use people a bad way. I don't really think they try to use us a bad way. I think they used us because, of course, they're experimenting, right? Well, will this work? You know, and it worked with, uh, with Southern for a little bit. And then, hey, we got, I think, the first five rating or something for season two ever in history or whatever. So then they said, oh, this is successful. And then they said, hey, how can we continue making this bigger and bigger and bigger and making more money? And they just continue with the seasons like anybody, any other business would do, right? So I think we were used from that perspective. But I will have to tip my hat off to people like Connie and like uh, Ron Deshay, who were members of our, our uh, production team, who honestly, when I was in L.A., I called Ron. Ron answered the phone and Ron came and picked me up and Ron took me to his studios. And he he said, this is how you hustle. And any questions I had, he answered. And so I think for the most part, I mean, I think we had some really good experiences, too. We were at Spring Bling. We hung out with Wyclef John, Nafis. You already know, brother. I It's to the grave on that one. You know what I'm saying? But. I mean, we had we had so many experiences. I mean, we went to BT Awards. We got to sit in the line with uh, Destiny's Child. They were literally sitting there. We had to, we got to say hi to them. They told us they loved our show. We met Janet Jackson, Jermaine Dupree. I mean, we did so much that ninety nine point nine percent of all people in college, whether you're HBC or not, would never experience. So, did they use us? Yes, absolutely. But I don't think they use us in a bad way. And everybody else has a different experience. But from my experience. I, I would say I I I and I, I use them right back. I said, yeah, we was definitely used. I don't feel bad about it because it got us all like it got us it got the ball rolling with all of us pretty much. Like we're doing stuff and things like that. It like helped us, but at the same time, you know, we got 
it's like being an NCAA basketball player. You know what I'm saying? Your likeness get used and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't get you don't get paid for that. You know what I'm saying? And stuff like that. You be on a video game and they just see your silhouette and your number or whatever and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So you know who you is. You just got to rock with it like that, you know? And that's how things was. That's how we had to look at it, too. I was looking at it like that because it wasn't like they was trying to put uh, – well, my, my my coaches wasn't, like, trying to, like, allow us to have stuff because they felt like it messed with my focus and everything like that. We don't want to have this. You know, it was an old type, an old way of thinking. We was also in an old way of thinking down there, too, at the time. You know what I'm saying? We had, like, all those OG people that was, like, in – you know what I'm saying? That was in it. Like, you know, we had R.I.P. Dr. Holloway because that shit, without him, none of us would be here pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, shit, he was the one that was, like, pushing for us. Like, he pushed for the school to have it. It changed when new people came in. The whole school dialogue, the whole shit changed. Like, when people came in that was new, they took over. They didn't want that to be on the school, right, Peaches? I don't think they wanted that. They didn't like that a part of it. They, they felt like we was trash or something like, you know what I mean? We wasn't good. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, we did get a lot of a lot of backlash. It, yeah, it a was lot a lot of, of backlash. <laughs> a lot of backlash. Yeah. They didn't like how we represented the school. Um, mm -hmm. Even with, I mean, do I feel like they use us? Well, this is a capitalistic society. I mean, we know why the show was created. We know <laughs> that BT has to get ratings, you know, money, you get, you know, sponsors. We know it's all about money. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we just got the bad head of the stick. You know what I'm saying? We weren't paid a lot of money. You know, we did not get, you know, it wasn't any tuition paid for, any loans, you know, paid for. It's kind of like how you got celebrities now, and I'm pretty sure you paid them a good penny. You know what I'm saying? To do it. When you probably could have took a took some Southern University students that, needed tuition money, needed their student loans paid, you know, that are really dealing with um, the issues of being a college student. Shit, I was so, about to out. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, I feel like we, we, you know, but again, it's an opportunity that comes once in a lifetime. Everybody doesn't get that opportunity. And, you know, hopefully if BET continues or whoever decides to take the show or continue with the show, that they will start taking to really think about how it affects, you know, people's lives and, you know, affect young people. Because if my daughter was on there now, I'd be like, uh-uh, ma'am, we're going to have to talk about some money. Because if you have predominant uh, white colleges now paying athletes for their image and likeness, we have to step our game up as well. Because you're getting paid using our likeness. So that's the thing now. BT needs to pay people for their likeness. And so if you're going to pay a celebrity to do it, you should be able to pay regular college students to do it as well. Well, you cook it all. I got see, see you now. We, we, we in my bag. Now we, we, we in introspective bag. <laughs> like, we, 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 we in my arena. All right. We, we on my basketball court. See, I look, we love, I, man, I'll tell, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. This ain't in the, this ain't in the I got to get hair cut. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. Brittany, so same question to you. So do you think that, you know, BET at that time, do you think that they used you or do you, do you think they worked in partnership with you and Langston? Well, it's the entertainment business for one. So you kind of have to know what you're getting into and what you're looking at before you even step into it. So doing this, they wanted something out of us and hungry, eager, excited, not knowing much college kids want the fame and exposure, right? The problem with that was we both wanted something for from each other, fair exchange. The college kids, we didn't have the law. We didn't have the contracts. We didn't have how to make money after this on our side. That's the problem. So do I feel used? Not necessarily, because when you walk into that arena of, okay, I want to play with the big boys. I want to be a part of this. I know this could better my life. I got to know what I'm doing. And if I don't know, but I have some people on my team that do know. Our problem was we weren't prepared the way we should have been. And we really kind of didn't know how because we're college kids in Oklahoma trying to just take advantage of an opportunity. But, yeah, they're taking advantage. But we all got on the show because we wanted to do it in some way, shape, or form. So we wanted something from each other. But like Peach said, it was 
the after effect of okay where, where do we go now what do we do now how do we profit where's the money in this let's because i mean i'll be known from the girl Brittany from college hill until shoot i die and everyone else will too israel and Brittany and peaches the john fire and that likeliness and that name will stay around forever it, especially if they keep doing this these additions and if we become even more famous off of doing other things because of it it'll never go away so do i feel used no do i think i should have been better prepared on my own to handle what was next afterwards yes and was it their 100 percent complete responsibility to do it hell no because it's the entertainment it's bt like come play with us know what you're doing and if not it is what it is so i think that just that whole entire just this conversation is is powerful because these are the other sides that we don't see about media and the effects of media so i want to ask you about the criticism because i'm gonna be honest so like i said i didn't get a chance and the privilege of watching you all when you were on bet but i did my research i always love you know doing research before i talk and do interviews i want to be well versed in the conversation so when immediately when i in when i looked up college hill langston I saw a barrage of articles from, you know, the Higher Education Digest, from, you know, different publications of that time criticizing the show. And, you know, and, and it was more than any other season. Even University of Virgin Islands, you had, you know, different criticisms of it because of, you know, the fight that happened. But I saw a large amount of criticism from that point in time. So I want to start with you, Israel. So looking back at it now, now that you're an alum and you have a family and, you know, you see media from a different perspective than you did as a college student, like what do you feel about the criticism that College Hill Langston got now? Well, I think that the criticism that they got was because they didn't believe the kind of the previous question you asked was, do we think that we, uh, we're going to be portrayed on the show like we thought we were, right? I don't think that they feel we were portrayed based off of how the producers and BET told them we would. So, because again, they followed us to school for like a week, week and a half, two weeks maybe, and then the rest of it was just at the house chilling. So, from an overall perspective, all they saw was drama. They saw us dancing. They saw us talking about sex. They saw us fighting. They saw us, but they didn't really see the real true nitty gritty Nafis giving it all to become a great basketball player to help the university become great. They didn't see uh, out uh, uh, peaches being the great mother. She is a single mother, you know, trying to figure out how to make stuff work while she's in college. They didn't see Brittany, this beautiful young girl who was out here in college trying to figure out her way to make things work um, uh, from a single person. And, 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 and I mean, and Tanisha being the God fearing woman, she was, you know, they didn't see what they thought they were going to see they didn't see it um and so from that perspective that's how i look at that but the criticism you got to also understand this is oklahoma this is 2003 2004 oklahoma and um it wasn't really till like i would say like 2005 2006 that things started kind of like being normalized with this type of atmosphere these type of shows to where they wouldn't have got the backlash they got so um I, I feel like that was the reasoning behind why it was so crazy. Uh, what's the question again? Because this what happened. Oh, 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 yeah. 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 hey, hey, that, that was that, that was yes. uh, breaking it down. Using that Langston degree, we love to see it. All right, breaking <laughs> it down. Okay, <laughs> but essentially, just like your perspective on the criticism that was levied back then. Because, like I said, when I looked up, you know, about College Hill Langston, I, I saw. Um, you know, the Oklahoman just detailing the show, but I saw higher I saw the Higher Education Digest. I saw a couple of the local publications talking about how alumni were mad and about how it was a judge that graduated, I think, in 1956 uh, mm -hmm. that wanted that wanted that wanted to go after the Board of Regents. He wanted to go after BET. <laughs> he he wanted to go after the, the Supreme Court. He wanted to go after Barack Obama. Barack Obama was listening at that time. He was he was in Illinois. He was like Barack Obama. You got it. Fox News, CNN, HBC Post. I didn't know HBC Post, but he wanted everybody. Okay. Right. So, right. Yeah, right. I'm like, he's, if he's still with us, like, at this point, right. Like, he, right. He was real right. mad. Golly. Like, I'm just saying. Yeah. He, just a, just he, a piggyback. He, off 19, what he this second man interview with Britney was 1956. Okay, come on now. If he's right, still with us, right. all right. It was still. It was. See, he saw civil rights. He saw college Hill. Okay, he right. saw two errors. Okay, right, <laughs> right. That's right. 
that's not gonna be an interview, but basically that that is <laughs> that is the sense of the question. So like, so like just the criticism, like you know, like how do you look at that criticism now that that you're now an alum, now you have a family and you and you've grown. How how do you look at that criticism now? Um, I can understand. Like he said, uh, just to piggyback off of what he said, they probably didn't when they took the opportunity for them to come to the school. Um, they probably alumni or I wouldn't even say alumni because probably alumni didn't know yet. <laughs> probably people that are on the board knew. Um, and of course, the president, they were probably looking at it as an opportunity to give exposure to Langston University and the Langston University experience and the excellence of Langston University. Um, Langston University was known for nursing and different things. Bessie Coleman went there. A lot of people went there that were very successful, very prestigious. So, again, they probably were going into it thinking it was going to be one way. It ended up being another way, of course, being in the Bible Belt. Because, you know, even now you have more um, LGBTQ, you know, experiences now on TV. It probably would have blew their mind if we had did that, you know, something that happened like that back then. You know, now it's more acceptable. But we come from a Bible Belt. Oklahoma is a, a Republican state. It's a red state. Very conservative. Um, so I believe there's a lot of conservative people that went to Langston. So I think the whole issue is so I expect the backlash because, you know, like I said, they expect for the best to be shown, you know, to represent their school that they are so proud to wear, you know, wear the colors and um, say that they went to Langston University. I think if Dr. King was alive and, and that showed Morehouse like that, he would feel the same way. You know, so probably would have had a backlash about that. It would have had a whole speech to talk about it. So, you know, so, <laughs> so you know, that's that's the whole thing right there. It, is, it just was a different time. <laughs> it was a different time. Um, they expected something else. We expected something else. My parents expected something else. But it ended up, like I said, it's about ratings and what's going to sell the show and what's going to make this show successful. And they did what they had to do. And I mean, as you can see, the show continued for a while. So they were successful with what they did. Hey, I, I'm just thinking in my head about Doc, Dr. King. If it was that more, I was talking about, I had a dream and this oh, wasn't right. the dream I intended. Right, <laughs> talking about college you. <laughs> Right. The dream I intended right Where here. These kids on here acting a fool. <laughs> Where are think, they mamas and daddies? <laughs> I didn't expect somebody running naked. I didn't right. expect somebody getting lit on fire. <laughs> right. Oh my. God. I like I'm not that's not gonna leave my mind. That's not gonna leave my mind at this interview. I'm gonna think it. I'm probably gonna dream about that. Dr. King just, just, just standing up there. I like in, in the boondocks episode gonna be in my mind about returning right. to King. Dr. King came right. back and went, oh my god. <laughs> All right. So the feast, I I, I, I wanna kill wanna I wanna kick it to you. The criticism gonna come regardless, like it doesn't matter. Like, you know, if you gonna I could have been on the show doing wild shit and they did, they still was gonna criticize me, but I would have went to the hood famous. You feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? The hood would have loved me for all that shit. You know what I'm saying? I didn't hey, if you let the truth be told, like shit, when I went back to the hood, I ain't do enough. You feel me? I didn't do enough. You know what I mean? I wasn't on there wilding enough. I wasn't on there doing like you know what I'm saying. I wasn't in Newark, New Jersey. I'm gonna tell you like that. You know what I'm saying? Like I just I was cool and calm, you know what I'm saying? I just did that. But that was a part of me, too, because I had seen so much. You know, you come from where I come from, you see a whole lot, you know. Um, what's that, PTSD? Help me out, Peaches, you know. Well, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? I got to experience all that stuff like that and had to see that type of, you know, ill will and come to – and I came to Oklahoma <laughs> on some, like, a, a change, a difference and all that, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't know it was all this going on. Like, I didn't know, like, you know, you'll see – Bible goers change and be, you know, now nah, they love it. They love loving hip hop. You know what I'm saying? They ain't criticize the love of hip hop. They right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They eating it up. You know what I'm saying? They right there every night faithfully. You know what I mean? Shit. It, I think we was real world. We actually met them. You know what I'm saying? Just to put all of it in a nutshell. Shit, we did. Y'all remember? Yep. That's what I'm we, saying. Like, we met so many people. Absolutely. Like manifestation, like you know? oh you the OU national team member, we party with them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, we was around. We was uh, 
we like we might have not got like our credit or whatever and stuff like that, you know what I mean? But we was around. We shook some people's hands and shit like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Michael, did we shook Michael Jordan's hand, the BT Awards. Like wait, wait, Michael yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan. Johnson. Michael Jordan. Literally. And Michael, Michael, Michael Magic Johnson. The second best yeah. player of all time, Michael Jordan. And they the second yeah. best player <laughs> ass, the number one player ever of all time. But yeah. I will say this. Magic Johnson was there. Was there. Janet, Janet, Jackson, them, yeah. Janet Jackson went to somebody Beyonce. and told her and said, I love you guys. Yeah. Janet yeah. Jackson. Wait, Janet, so Janet Jackson said that that, that she loved the show. Yeah. Yep. Beyonce too. Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce loved it. it. Yeah, they we love you guys' show. Say it, say it in, in the, we, we watch your show all the time. Kelly Rowland, right. Michelle, we're all together. In the, yeah, we right. watch show. 13 episodes of Fire. We don't got it no more. We don't know where yeah. it's at. <laughs> I, was up, I was gone. Oh, yeah, we never I, show, I think the first season and second season are only seasons that are not on DVD. Yeah. Or you can't not, watch it on Netflix. You know, not a BT Plus, none of that. Our shows well, weren't. A lot of my family has it on DVD. I'm, not, I'm sorry, on VHS. Yeah. And so many years have went past. I because I went to LA and because I started the acting and modeling thing. Every time I went to audition, oh, you're the guy from BET. I hated being on the reality show because they typecasted me as a reality star. So I hated it. So I didn't even want to watch it. People say, oh, I'll give you this copy. I don't, don't want to see that. Now I wish I would have just took that, <laughs> that copy because now everybody wants it, right? You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I want. I want. I want to put a face on. I want it. Okay. Not not just everybody. Randall Barnes with HBC Pulse wants it. Okay. You know, so we're not we're not we're not gonna do it by any illegal means, okay? So Langston University, I, I don't have the time. Don't don't sue me, okay? I love y'all, but I mean, if 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 a, a VHS tape just happened to to, to drop by my way, I would be able to play it because I don't got a VHS hey, player. But I'm if it was a DVD, I'm just saying. Still working on Kardashian and Ray J thing. Somebody drop that tape. Oh, <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, they can't yeah. find it. Do yeah. it. <laughs> oh, hey, there's not, it's not gonna be all over here. Listen, I ain't trying to get sued because I might know what it was going on, but I mean, I, I honestly, and I've asked, I've asked around about it. I, I honestly have just within years, like, you know, just me being a part of the national HBC media and meeting people from Langston, from Southern. I've, I've always asked about it, and it, it always the same answers that it, it's locked up, you know. And but I like, I think that just for the sake of the fact that. It has been almost 20 years ago. It's been 18 years ago to this point or 19 or 18 or 19 years ago or 17. And I just think that just for archival purposes, why not release it? Who's it going to hurt now? I mean, like Lang Langston's doing amazing things. They're, they're great. Southern is Southern. Like they, they, they retooled. The football team's going to be amazing. They have, a, they have a, another reality TV show coming out. You know, why not us Southern dance? So who is it going to hurt to see that season now that you all have graduated? It is going on. It's not going to hurt anybody. You know, so I, I would love to see it. But at the same time, as someone that is very sensitive about the images, you know, that that we see. And also, I understand, you know, how, how it feels to have, you know, to protect the image of your institution. I understand if they felt as if it was bad. I understand why they, why they wouldn't air it. And they have the rights to it. You know, so I, I understand that. But. I want to ask you about College Hill Celebrity Edition because it's out. That's the reason why, honestly, we are here today. The right. College Hill Celebrity Edition brought us together because that is the occasion that we're here. And that this might be the reboot of new additions to come with alumni. It might be, you know, a students might come from this, you know, and that it's at, at other schools. So I want to just get your view in general on the show, not necessarily the episodes or breakdowns, because I got that. We do that on HC Post YouTube. So y'all want to see that? Y'all go check that out. But I want to get the view on the show itself. So I want to start with you, Israel. So what is your view on College Hill Celebrity Edition? I think there's two sides. OK, one side is that maybe they couldn't find a school that to allow them to take to use their likeness. Right. Because of the p potential backlash in it. And then you, you hear the word HBCU, you're trying to get away from the negative thought process that a lot of people have of HBCUs. So maybe that's a perspective and that's the reason why they went the celebrity route. Plus, oh, it's automatic rating. So I've heard it's done well and I'm and I'm happy for it. hundred percent. I'm not going to be a hater whatsoever. If it's if it's good, it's good. It's great. It's great. Awesome. I think the other side of it is, is it could have potentially be the bomb, like the, the thing that actually drowns College Hill out completely and it never comes back. 
So there's two sides of it. It could it could it could help us in a, in a from a perspective, and I say us because I'm part right. Um, it could help us in a, in a from a standpoint of revitalizing. Uh, but then also, if it tears down those walls, if it ends up being super negative, if it ends up being all the drama, if it ends up being the drugs and all these things that everyone portrays it as being already, I don't think there's going to be another campus in the United States that will allow it um, to become a part of uh, what it is. So I think there's that two sides. That's a very interesting take, because um, one thing that I know just from my research is that after 2007, a lot of HBCU administrators were reluctant. And then we even reported um, a few weeks ago uh, before College of Liberty Edition premiered that Deion Sanders Jr., you know, Trace Evans is married to Deion Sanders Sr., like they wanted to bring it back at Jackson State with regular students. And that's according to our reporting from what Deion Sanders Jr. said on Instagram. So it's been discussions and it's been conversations and the Jackson State edition didn't happen, you know, and, and it's at Texas Southern with, with celebrities. So I do think that, you know, now we're way more sensitive with our image. And then especially, and I'm going to just name a show that occurred, Sorority Sisters. That got out of here. Like they, we, we, like, they packed that up real quick. Sorority Sisters was, was dead on arrival, honestly, because the black community said no. What you're not about to do is you're not about to desecrate the image of the black Greek letter organizations. And what they did, they didn't just tweet about it. They called sponsors. You know, so I think that right now we are in a different era where it's like, okay, we love reality TV and black folks watch it a lot, but there's a bar. You know what I'm saying? And and, and there's a bar that, that, that we're not going to cross. But I want to ask you, you know, Peter, so like what so what do you think about this new you know, version of College of Celebrity Edition? I think they should have never did it with celebrities. I feel like they're celebrities. If they want to go to college, they have enough money to go. They could have went. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they didn't really do the college experience. So why are you even showing that? It's like, of course, they have ratings. They have followers. So we'll just throw them on there. Instead of putting college, like I said, missing the opportunity to really follow historical Black college students that are going to school athletes. You know, we got we have the big issue about the athletes now, the, um, you know, the black uh, the athletes that are going to historical black colleges compared to the ones that are going to PWs. We just had someone sign with Jackson State that was uh-huh. the number one ranked player in the nation. You know what I'm saying? So I think the thing is they missed the opportunity again to really bring attention to HBCU the difference in PWs compared to HBCUs, how, you know, the support and how students, you know, the, 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 um, just the, the disparity of going sometimes to HBCU compared to a PW, you know what I'm saying? So they had so many opportunities to really follow the, the, the black student and the black student's journey, you know what I'm saying? And how things really work. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, I say, you know, 2020, a lot of stuff got exposed where, you know, where, you know, President Trump had took a lot of money from HBCUs. A lot of people didn't know that, you know, his, you know, person of education that took a lot of money and said it was illegal to have those type of schools and we're trying to shut them down. So this is the opportunity to put some real students and give them the opportunity to really show how historical black colleges not only um, has helped and been a success to African-Americans while getting an education, you know, but just just the struggle, just the walk, the journey. You bring in some celebrities, Nene wasn't trying to get a cert- certificate. She wasn't trying to get a college degree. She already has money. You know what I'm saying? She has an image. She has a likeness. You know, Ray J, they have an image. They have a likeness. You got a professional basketball player. You came from the Lakers. You have national rings. How were you going to be effective to show the walk or the journey as a historical black college student? Because you have real adult students. If you were trying to get adults, you really have adult students. I was one of them. So you they should have took the opportunity to do that and not. So I don't really agree with the celebrity edition. A lot of people don't from what I read comments you know i think they should should have just stuck with students and then again you know like i said focus more on the journey and going and the excellence of our historical black colleges because we are excellent i love that 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 makes sense 
So, um, Nafis, I want to toss to you, and then we're going to go on and wrap it up. So, what do you think about College Hill Celebrity Edition? Jeez. She, I couldn't even follow up. I couldn't even follow that up. Say no. Nah. But look. <laughs> um... It's it's just it's just something that was bound to happen, um, because you know when you look at things, it's like you know they're always trying to try new things. It's always like let's try this new, let's try this and whatever, or we run out of ideas and shit like that. That's why we ain't got scary movies today. Give me a scary movie today. That's scary. It ain't none. You know what I'm saying? You got to go back and steal an idea. You feel me? I got to go back to somewhere and steal that shit. So I could make some sense at least because none of the new shit makes sense. Don't make no sense. So you just be like, damn, I don't know what to really, you know, really like look or focus at after. So I have to go back and study. It's just like basketball. You got to go back and study grace. If you want to be great, you go study grace, right? You know what I'm saying? And that's what you do. So right now it's like they just ran out of ideas and shit like that. They got hit, hit with a, a halt, stand still, like shit, y'all can't bring this to this school y'all can't do y'all gonna have to do this whatever but it's really like let's bring in our friends let's bring in my friend you know what i'm saying i'm gonna bring my friends in and help them out or something like that give them some more they already got star power it's already star power there you know what i'm saying so it's really like it's kind of like damn i don't know if anything make the had them come by some or do go to the school and they did at the time or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Implement them like that. You know what I'm saying? Do it like that, if anything. But it still follows real students around. You know what I'm saying? But it still follow the real students around. Have them as like little support or something like you come. They come in or something like you know, implement them. Implement them in there. You know what I'm saying? So that way they still in there with the students or whatever, and it gives both credibility. I, it heightens everybody. Everybody gets heightened. You know what I'm saying? This, whatever they promoting, Slim Thug, he, he's a businessman, he's an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur myself, you know what I'm saying? So, like, we all live, but why not get us the regular people? We already done seen y'all go hard, you know what I'm saying? Slim Thug and them party with us. Can we say that, too? Hey, say it. Say it. Y- y- y'all party with <laughs> you know us? Like, he definitely him, Mike Jones, Paul Wall, all of them. Right, I'm about back, in the day, back in the day. Yeah. Back then, they didn't roam. Now, home, man, all alone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, man, 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 I, man, I would have, I would have been like, hey, hey, my, like, hey, who are you? You would have said, Michael. I tried to do that, but ain't nobody gonna hear me. I'm like shadow band or some shit. Ain't nobody gonna hear me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, we ain't even able to tap in and say hello. We don't have no type of bridge to like talk to them or nothing like that. So like the whole celebrity thing is like we don't have that with them. You know what I'm saying? They celebrities. They don't have get BT tickets to to the any of the award shows. Like yeah, and we ain't, and we ain't <laughs> ever been like it's not even like we we we've been doing our own thing. We ain't even been mad. It's none of that. Like we don't look at it like we we looking for pity or no pity party, no shit like that. We be more than we we happy. We happy for all of them, for everybody. It's a lot of us. You feel me? It's a lot of us. We got a group. We got a group like a whole little thing of where we do tap in with each other. The ones that do tap in, you know what I'm saying? We we talk with each other. It's a good thing. The, all, through all college hill platforms, we all cool. But the celebrity edition is still, you know, celebrities, and celebrities ain't got that type of time to talk to really like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Folks of our caliber. You know what I'm saying? They don't have that type of time. You know what I'm saying? So we got to keep smiling and keep grinding and keep shining like we do. We ain't tripping. You know what I mean? But uh, more power to the celebrities, I, I say so. You know what I'm saying? But they did. We we have party with them before, too. Yes, we have. Man, like that, that that's yeah. dope. Like, like, listen, if anything, y'all were living the life. And I think oh, that, yeah. that, that that is the big thing that a lot of college students see about the College Hill experience is just you know, we call it clout now, like 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 the yeah. clout and the pull that you'll be able to, to to get from it. So first and foremost, I want to just thank you all. Like this was mm-hmm. a very enlightening interview, and I believe that in general, as College Hill evolves, and also I think really reality TV evolves, and a lot of our students that go to HBCUs want to get into the entertainment industry, and they see reality TV shows as a vehicle. I believe that an interview such as this will help them to see what it used to be. And in parallel to what it is now, I think that 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 that's important. So I appreciate your honesty. Where can we find you on social media, and how can we support you? 
Uh, just social media, uh, Cloudy Country Boy. I'm not a huge social media guy anymore like I used to be, but uh, if you want to see some good family vibes and some and some uh, and some and some beautiful people, definitely come to my come to my Instagram. Always positive vibes. Uh, but before we do leave, I w- would like to say, Peaches, you definitely showed me how. I never talk like this to my any of my castmates, but you all you really showed me how a woman carries herself. Uh, you got to think, you. Peaches was a woman who had a firm backside, as coming to America would say. And every guy in the in the in Lanks <laughs> University wanted them some peaches. Every I don't know one guy that didn't. But you know what? Peaches carried herself like a lady that I've never seen with that Thank you. in that capacity, right? Um, and then because Peace is Peace is still on the on the on the line, Feast actually taught me how to have no hate. Like Feast, you can't hate Feast. I've never heard Feast say one thing bad about anybody. Like you could have it in a room, you could talk mad. It could be 20 people in the room talking about this one guy, and they get the feast and feast like, you know, he's just that guy, you know. <laughs> you know, so feast taught me how to be calm, cool, collective, and just to always be positive. So I learned a lot from the team. And uh, but at the end of the day, you wanna you wanna see positivity, cloudy country boy, come holler at me. That's what it is. Wait, we love the positivity, we love the positivity. So peaches, where can we find you on social media and where can we support you? Yes, um, at Peaches Francois on Instagram. That's spelled F R A N C O I S. Peaches Francois, and I'm Alva Francois on Facebook. Um, I'm like Izzy. I really don't have time to be on there as much, but um, I'm actually about to launch a podcast and stuff, different things. I want people to check me out. I'm into politics. I'm a probably run be the next governor in about five years or senator so um that's what i'm actually getting into right now so you know they can just check me out on instagram or facebook we love to see the next governor after stacy abrams all right gonna be the next right. one too right. all right we love to see it so now if he's working we find you on social media and where can we support you that was my crush back in the day too y'all <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say that. <laughs> but um these days, um, I'm still like the social butterfly or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I'm still around shit because like that's really kind of how I always like connect with everybody or whatever. Cause other than that, I'm where I'm Waldo. You won't even know where I'm at or whatever. Like I'm out of there. I'm neither here nor there. So you can find me on uh Instagram at uh at Waldo A W K. That's Waldo A W K, and then I'm I'm on Snapchat too. But you know, you probably find it more entertaining than me on um on Instagram. So Brittany, so where can we find you on social media? So my only social media page right now is um, I have Facebook and Instagram, and it's Brittany the Realtor. Facebook is Brittany uh, Lewis, and then Instagram is Brittany the Realtor. So you can find me there. So real quick, I just want to say just once again, thank you all just one for coming on, just for imparting your knowledge and giving us just so much history about what was going on back in the day. And if College Hill Langston ever is released or y'all ever come upon, come upon it, I just want to say that, you know, my email is always open. All right, I just want to say that, but I want to say thank you so much for coming on. You're listening to HBCU Pulse Radio.